Hey everyone, I am joined by Raja Kadori from AMD. How's it going, Raja? It's going good. It's good to have you here. Steve. Yeah, thank yes, you for hosting us. We are in the AMD offices in Sunnyvale. Yes. And the last time we spoke was at the Macau event for Polaris. Right. Yes. So um, since then, a couple major things have happened in game technology. The main one, I guess, to call attention to would be Doom with Vulkan being kind mm -hmm. of like a seminal example mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of Vulkan working. So a major topic I wanted to ask you about was uh, this idea of shader intrinsic functions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we talked about this briefly in our 480 review. Since then, it's become a lot more relevant. Mm -hmm. Can you give folks a top level overview of shader intrinsic functions, then we'll drill down into it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So. Um, Kind of, you know, before we go specific on shader intrinsics, right? The, uh, you know, the thing about first Vulkan and DX12 uh, is uh, the reason we are very much excited about, and you know, we started the whole mantle initiative for low-level APIs. Uh, it was around reducing the overhead of the APIs so that you don't need as many CPU cycles to. Uh, you know, push a frame to the GPU, right? right? And, and also take advantage of the, all the cores that are available in the system and all the resources available in the system. And that was the intent of those APIs. And, and there was a basis for that, that um, game consoles uh, were all based around kind of a very low or head, uh, low level APIs. Right. And if you look at a game console, uh, and compare it to a PC, right? If you just kind of as a gamer, right? If I put myself as a gamer, right? You look at, like, you know, you pay $299 or $399, you get the whole box, and you get the game. And if you compare to the experience per dollar of a game console, mm -hmm. to the experience per dollar of a PC, a game console is so far ahead. Right, right? Sure. You know, that, that you get so much more. I'm not saying that PC games don't look good or right. better, but they cost a lot right, more. Yeah. No one's saying consoles or whatever is better than the other. It's just it's, what's a per dollar. It's just if you see experience per dollar, right. I call it, it's so much better, right? And when you look at it, uh, and you know, that bothered uh, us all the time that, you know, it's the same hardware, you have actually more hardware sitting on a PC. And why is it that we can't give, uh, you know, better experience per dollar on a right. PC, right? And when you kind of analyze it from a technical standpoint, right, all this kind of, you know, software infrastructure issues come about, right? One is the, you know, the API itself is I overhead. You know, the, the developer has more control of the, all the, you know, CPU cores and GPU on the console and not on the PC. So the first step to that was, hey, can we do a low overhead API on the PC? Right. Which was kind of, you know, check with the X12 and Vulkan, okay? The next step, so the API is one thing, the next step is there are a whole bunch of hardware features, right, and instructions and all that are not exactly exposed through standard APIs, right, like DX12 and Vulkan, okay. So we, ha and we see that these features are leveraged by the developer on the console to get, you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, right. times time, 2x performance. And when they port their game over to the PC, they say, ah, I was doing this on the console, and I know it's the same GCN architecture, but I can't get access to this stuff, right? And so shader intrinsics were one of those things that the, the, you know, the folks at Bethesda were using on, uh, uh, they were doing some interesting things on the console. Right. And uh, we said, hey, how do we uh, give you access to the same thing on a PC? So that's how, you know, that's the kind of the motivation for the shader intrinsic functions that we added to Vulkan, uh, where they could map their algorithms that they were doing on the console onto the PC. Well, I guess yeah. at a top level too, it, uh, if I understand it right, shader intrinsic functions sort of remove some abstraction layers to the hardware. Yes. Right, so, so, so is yeah. it going straight to machine code or when? Uh, yeah, more or less. I mean, the compiler still has to kind of, you know, make sure that you know, that everything is a, you know, legal, proper program. Right. <laughs> that, that's fed to the hardware, so compiler helps. But yeah, it's, it's almost like inline assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're an uh, assembly program or, uh, you know, you can inject in, in some versions of uh, C compilers, you can have inline assembly. <laughs> right. <laughs> you say, hey, this, this instruction, just pass it on, <laughs> right? You know, don't uh, do anything. So it's kind of like that where, you can insert uh, uh, these instructions, right? right? So, so they can get as far, at least as far as shader programs go, near equivalence to whatever they can do on a on a game console, right? And uh, and and it's cool that you know 
we, we love Vulkan that uh, allows us to extend the API to add these kind of features within our own schedule, within our own control. We don't have to go ask permission to right. anybody and, uh, you know, other than, you know, getting the game developers to adopt it. So that's, uh, um, so we are excited and, and what you will uh, see us doing, Steve, uh, from a game developer perspective uh, is you'll see us kind of opening up, I mean, the whole GPU open initiative and, you know, we can go more into that, but was the idea was to make all the tools available on the PC, right? So if, if something is available in the hardware, the developer needs to find a way to get to it. Right. <laughs> so that was our goal, right? So it's not always easy to provide the console level uh, access, uh, but our, we are trying, you know, we're opening up every every door we can <laughs> for them to have access right. to that, right? So I think, you know, if we drive the experience per dollar for the PC to be, I, it doesn't need to match uh, console, but it, you know, I think right now it's probably a factor of two or three, <laughs> easily factor of three off, right? Sure. So if it kind of gets closer, um, you know, PC gaming will thrive even more, right? I mean, you know, it's like it's a rich, rich ecosystem and also things like VR happening and other stuff, it's just uh, takes it to the next level. Right. So uh, I guess to take a step back and remind folks why it's important to have this more direct access to the hardware. We can look at, I guess, the, the most probably cited aspect would be with DirectX 12 or Vulkan, where you can move these draw calls directly to the GPU mm -hmm. and eliminate that overhead on the CPU. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking to that, when looking at shader intrinsic functions with Doom as an example, uh, what is sort of the immediate performance benefit that people should be looking for? With Shadron, so Shadron, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting question, right? With, uh, you know, the lower head APIs, the benefit comes uh, in application scenarios where you're CPU bound. Right. Right. With Shader Intrinsics, it's actually a GPU feature. Mm -hmm. It is like, uh, it helps in a GPU bound scenario, right? So if my game is GPU bound, you know, whatever uh, rendering I'm doing, whatever drawing I'm right. doing, uh, then I need to find a, a better way to do the drawing, right? So I still want to accomplish drawing the same picture, mm. but can I do it in less number of cycles, right? You know, less less number right. of instructions. Um, and that's where, you know, hey, what is the hardware capable of? You know, can I do, like, you know, combine these four operations together into kind of one interesting instruction uh, that the hardware may have, but I don't have control of that because I'm writing code at a high level and passing it through a compiler. Right. So that's where shader intrinsics kick in is when I'm GPU bound, which is a very common scenario, especially if you do anything 1080p or above, <laughs> you know, on, on yeah. uh, you know, kind GPU of affordable, bound. you're GPU bound, right? So you're CPU bound at lower resolutions, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, at 1080p and above, you tend to become more uh, GPU bound. So right. that's where the shader intrinsics uh, kick in and help you. Right, which is, uh, Part of the, the immediate benefit there too is I feel like this generation of hardware more than ever, we're seeing like the RX 480 as an example, is a $200, $250 card, but you're able to play pretty easily 1440p. Yes. Higher, yeah. you know, higher definition graphics. Yeah, which is, you know, <laughs> was long time coming to bring right. that down to, you know, $200, <laughs> right. dollar level. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an you know, exciting place for a, a PC gamer, right? That is it for part one of our interview with Raja Kudori. Check back on Saturday the 22nd for part two where we talk about GPU Open, what it is, how it compares to CUDA, and we also talk about how software is more than 50% of the formula when talking about software and hardware and what they output for gaming, VR, and otherwise. So check back for that on Saturday. Otherwise, Patreon link to the post troll video. As always, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>